This is a video to talk about finger cords. I love finger cords. It's a really special embellishment that you can make. As you can see, it's a st very strong, sturdy cord that you make. Uh, here's an example of finger cords that I have used on my sock from my book, The Embellished Sock, Knitted Art for the Foot. This is um, the Celebration Sock, and you can see how I've just added a series of these, these finger cords uh, and then to create the embellishment on this sock. Finger cords are much stronger and sturdier than an eye cord is and they're very easy to make and they're very versatile. Here's another example of finger cords used. This is for my sock from the book called Tiptoe Through the Tulips and I'm just going to show you these three-dimensional tulips that embellish the sock at the top of the sock and you'll see here that the finger cords act as the stamen in this. So it's a very, very versatile embellishment. You could use it to make uh, pulls on uh, like a, uh, if you wanted a shoestring type of thing for a baby's booty or if you were making a bonnet or a, a baby's cap and you wanted to tie the ear flaps down, you could do that. It's just a very, very versatile and useful um, technique to know, finger cords. Uh, for, for most of my work, I use a single yarn of a solid color and I simply take a length of yarn and I fold it in half. I create a slip knot in the bottom of that half and I place the working slip knot in my index finger of my right hand and I cover it with my thumb. Now this is the left hand. If I pull that it doesn't move. If I pull this right arm that's the slip knot. That's the one that moves. I'm going to do this quickly but don't worry I'll come back and show you how to do it slower but I just want to show you the rhythm that you get into. You hold the yarn in your left hand here over those three fingers and you extend your index finger. You go over the loop. You pick up a new loop. You transfer the slip knot to your index finger of your left hand. You cover it with your thumb. You release the right loop and you pull it. Now I'm just going to do it quickly. Don't worry I'm going to come back later and show you. But you see you get into this really steady rhythm and making sure that you pull the tension the same firmly but gently but not too tightly and that you make your loop the same way before you know it you have a really nice strong sturdy cord. Now one thing you have to do, if you, it's like a long tail cast on, you have to have two ends of your yarn and I tried to figure out a formula to tell you how long you needed to make this yarn before you could do it and I was never really able to do that. What I suggest you do is simply work a piece of yarn that is going to be the yarn you're going to work with. Do it for about an inch and then don't bind it off. By the way, the way you bind it off is simply the last loop you just pull it all the way through. But if you don't bind it off and you do say an inch worth of cord, you measure that cord and you know that's an inch. You put your thumbs here, you hold it and you just simply unravel it and that way you can measure that length of cord and or that length of yarn and you know that that is what you need to make an inch worth of eye cord. Finger cord, not eye cord, finger cord. This is a finger cord technique. It's funny, I always get those say the wrong thing, but this we're making finger cords. Now let me show you what happens here. This is it's it's interesting to see. This is a single yarn that's been divided in half and made this nice strong finger cord. Here I have taken two, two yarns and divided them in half and made a cord. Look at the difference in size between the single cord and the double cord. And here, even bigger, are three lengths of yarn that have been divided into half. And so you have these exponentially different sizes depending on how many strands of yarn you use to make your finger cord. Now let me show you an easy way for you to learn this. I learned this from one of my students who got very confused and she recommended that I do it with two colors and it would be easier to learn and I think she's absolutely right. If you want to, you can even do your projects with two colors. Simply tie a knot in the end. Uh, you may tie it kind of loosely if you want to take it out so you can weave the ends in later. You make a slip knot in the red yarn and we put that slip knot and the loop on our right hand. I'm covering the knot with my, I'm putting the, 
putting the knot on my index finger and covering it with my thumb. I'm going to take the yellow yarn and put it in my left hand. I'm going to extend my finger. Now one thing that knitters always want to do is wrap the yarn around their finger. Don't do that. This is a case where you just want to think of your index finger as your knitting needle. Now watch, I simply go over the top of that red yarn and I pick up a new loop of yellow. I transfer the knot from my right hand to my left hand and I cover it with my thumb. I release the right hand and I gently but firmly pull it. Now it's all in my left hand. I pick up the yarn in my right hand. I extend my finger. I pick up a red loop. I transfer the knot. I cover the knot. I release and pull. Pick up a loop, transfer the knot, cover the knot, release the right hand, trans uh, and pull. So if you get into that kind of rhythm, loop, transfer, cover, release, and pull. Loop, transfer, cover, release, and pull. It's in my yarn here. Come over the top, pick up a loop, transfer the knot, cover the knot, release and pull. Let's do it one more time. It's in your three fingers here. You extend your finger. You don't wrap. You pick up a new loop. You transfer the yarn, the knot. You cover it with your thumb. You release it and you pull it. Loop transfer, cover, release, and pull. Loop, transfer, cover, release, and pull. One more time. Loop, transfer, cover, release, and pull. And you see here you have this really pretty uh, knot and in this case, it's, it's, this case it's done in two colors. If you wanted, you could simply undo this yarn here and work those ends in. And then if you wanted to bind this off, the last loop that you do, you just merely pull it through. And now it is, it's there. It's not going to come loose. So that is the finger cord. I hope that you will enjoy making finger cords and using them in all of your creative projects. It's a fun way to, to do a new technique and have fun doing it finger cords.